Hi, I'm Shannon. I, well, I uh, homeschooled for preschool, kindergarten, and first grade. Then I went to public school for second grade through sixth grade. Then I homeschooled again in seventh and eighth grade. And ninth grade, I dual schooled, so I did part time homeschooling and I took uh, electives at the high school. And then I went to regular public high school and regular public college. Uh, this is my mom, Christine, and she's the one that homeschooled us, as well as homeschooled my younger brother and one of my younger sisters and my 11 year old brother who is currently homeschooling. So we're, we uh, went through your Facebook questions and we're just going to answer some of them to you now. Um, so Jessica has a question about interest based learning. Okay. And I think she might be referring to kind of the unschooling approach as we got older. As you got older we kind of started trusting you more to make your own decisions and you were obviously very focused and motivated so that made us more confident to say yeah let's Let's let you decide. What, what do you want to do this year? So um, what grade, um, or how did you begin your interest-based learning? I think it was around middle school we started relaxing, saying, okay, if we don't hit grammar this year, or if we don't hit history this year, that's okay, you know? Yeah. Um, well, we learned about the Sunlight Curriculum through some friends that were doing it and loved it. And the Sunlight Curriculum is was right up my alley because all you do is read... Um, fiction and non-fiction books that relate to areas of history. So the year that I did it, we did the world history one, and we started a, with ancient Egypt all the way through a year, we went up to World War II. Um, so we would read two books at a time, a non-fiction and a fiction book from like ancient Egypt, and then we would move to the next era, and we would mark everything off on a map, mm -hmm. and um, the, all of those things, it. yeah, all of those things were fascinating to me, so I had no problem going in and reading the books. I wanted to be reading books anyway, which is what I kept getting in trouble for doing in school, <laughs> <laughs> reading yeah. books, and they would take the books away from me, and so now I'm just doing things that I like doing, but there's that added uh, aspect of it's also educational. And then in ninth, you also did. Um, that was kind of the core of your, you know, middle school yeah, years. I think core is, of it. is the history. And um, you did non-eastern or non-western cultures the whole year in uh, ninth grade, mm -hmm. but none of the written work, just the reading, which was like Vietnam, did just Asia, the reading, China. China. Yeah. And um, I think one comment you and Cody said one time was that when you went back into public school you had like this mental ability to say oh yeah I know about the 1400s or I know mm -hmm. about the 1200s or you, you could you kind of had a place to park things like after a, a study. Like a zoomed out timeline. Yeah. You know, um, timeline yeah, yeah which they don't do in school they teach no, you about topical they teach you about one subject and instead of what they should be teaching which is you know yeah, so it was kind of a global whole, way to, yeah, the whole to, like a big picture kind of way to start. But going back to the interest-based learning, um, one of the things that I really liked uh, stemmed from something silly, which was MySpace, which was hugely pop popular when I was um, starting high school. I loved being on MySpace, and one of the things that I learned from that was uh, you, you had the ability at that time to customize your homepage using HTML coding. Mm. And... Um, most of my friends would just, you know, copy and paste somebody else's code. But since I was homeschooling, I had the time to go through and learn how to do HTML coding. Um, and I would spend hours and hours on it. She probably thought that I was playing video games and she oh, would try really? to get me off the computer. Which what she didn't realize is I was actually learning how to do um, computer programming. And I, that's still an interest that I have today. I think I kind of figured that out when you were out there talking to... Um one of our neighbors, it's an engineer, and you're like 14, and you're like <laughs> discussing coding and HTML and all these terms I had never heard before, and I'm like, where did you learn all <laughs> yeah. that, you know? And yeah. here, here he's an engineer, and he's suggesting, well, you might want to study this, you might want to research that, you know? And you're like, oh, yeah, okay, and, you know, that was kind of cool. Yeah, that's something that uh, you would not get that in public school. There's no way. Uh, so that, you know. The just, ability to just boom, dive in. Yeah. Where you want and spend the time. No matter what your kid is interested in, there's going to be some way to tie that into something educational. So if your kid is just wants to play with Legos all day, 
put them in a Lego robotics club because guess what you need for robotics? You need math mm -hmm. and you need engineering. Which you, and you did. Need problem solving and you yeah. need logic. I did do the Lego robotics club. It was awesome. Yeah. Um, but use the, use their interests to get them into something educational. So yeah. you want to play want to play games all day? Okay, cool. Get them into computer programming. Go to codeacademy.com and have them start on that. There's tons of free resources on the internet. Yeah. Tons. Yeah. You didn't um, even have that. No, you know, I didn't even have that. Now ago. they yeah. have everything. Codeacademy.com is awesome for computer programming. Um, YouTube.edu will only pull up educational videos. Um, if your kid is only interested in uh, on soccer, okay, start learning about the countries where they play soccer and what their cultures are like. Or start learning to speak German because that's what they want to, if they want to play soccer to, for a living, they're going to need to learn how to speak German. There's something interesting that, that your kids are interested in that you can get them to uh, start using for education. Mm -hmm. And unschooling is not completely unstructured. You don't just let your kids run free. You, um, it's more directing their interests and channeling that so that they can learn while doing things that they enjoy. Mm -hmm. Which is what school should be, but it's not. <laughs> and most kids, I think all kids, they are very passionate and curious and interested, but a lot of them, if you stick them in a classroom, it, it's going to squelch what they really are fascinated by. You know, they, they um, like one thing I know um, I heard in our public schools when I served on the board is that kids around fifth and sixth grade, they're like totally intrigued. What's it like for a baby from conception to birth? That's the only part of the curriculum that's not covered in sex ed, that, at mm -hmm. least at the time. They don't cover that part, and that's such an appropriate thing to learn at you know, age 11 or 12 is the nine months of development and how, how the baby forms and what the baby needs and you know, the changes in the mother and all that stuff. I mean, that's maybe not a good example, but... No, that's, um, a, that's a great example. I, kids are like little sponges, and you can't stop them from learning. You can't they're, really stop them. You can't. Yeah. They're picking everything up, everything that they're around, they're picking up. And also, there's a, the verse in the, there's a verse in the Bible where it says, Mary watched Jesus and hid those things away in her heart. And I always thought of that when you guys were little. Like, I would watch you. and What drove you? What motivated you? What did you love? And then it was so different from what Cody or Molly loved. I mean, yeah. they, you really have to study your child and find out what fascinates them. Or Kelly's the perfect example. Yeah. Because she was, uh, Kelly is, what, 17 now? Mm -hmm. Well, she will be. She school. will be. And yeah. she's fat. She always wanted to be a veterinarian since she was born, basically. Yeah. And <laughs> so she would, she was homeschooled from what, what grades? Um, fifth and sixth and seventh. So for 5th, 6th, and 7th grade, I don't think she learned about anything other than animals. Animals, 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 animals. She <laughs> bred finches, she had mice, she had chickens, she... What else? This is a laboratory. She had a cat, she got a dog, she researched dogs, she talked us into a dog, and she <laughs> found a breeder, she negotiated the price from 500 <laughs> to 150. Um, she used her iPod money. We almost named him iPod. But yeah, everything was animals, animals, animals. Um, and she's going to be a veterinarian. And she started to draw them, so she became very artistic. And um, But it was really, like, that's a good example. It was all around her interests. But all these other things became, it, she became motivated because of her fascination with something. Right. Where for you, that probably would have been, if I had to make you breed finches, you probably would not have taken no. the interest. No. You did like the chickens, though. The chickens were cool. Yeah. yeah. chickens were a while. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, um, thanks for watching this video, guys. I'm going to put up some more videos pretty soon on Facebook and on YouTube, so check them out.